Hi, I'm Everett, and welcome back to the shop. Uh, this time it's just a little quickie, another uh, one of those making tools out of junk you have on hand. Um, this one here, I could go and buy the real tool, uh, but the thing is, I'm just a little bit on the cheap side right now, and feeling cheap anyway, and uh, I got the scrap to make it out of, so. What I'm going to need to do is, I need to drill some uh, 7 8 inch holes in a plastic box. Uh, it's for the shaper. Um, I've been tr getting around to now finally to getting to the electrical system to put it together. All the parts and bits are right here. Uh, however, all the switches and stuff need a 7 8 inch or 22 millimeter hole in order to uh, mount them in the box. Great. Okay, so I go jig through my sole hole saws and find I don't have a 7 8 um, <clears throat> So I break down and go buy one. And then I find out that uh, there are a number of different ways that uh, hole saws are mounted to their arbors. And the one I got has a half inch 20 thread in the center, and the rest of mine don't. They either have a couple flats that index onto flats on the shaft of the arbor, or they're a different thread or whatever. This little guy here already cost me 10 bucks, and the arbor to put it on is another 20. Um, I know I could go buy one, but a couple factors here. Uh, I actually want to get at this, you know, at some point in the near future. Um, if I can save 20 bucks, I will. And it's 10.30 at night, and even though I live in suburbia now, with the uh, big box hardware store only five minutes away, they're closed. So, I figure I'm just, yeah, I have some scrap around here, I'll just make an arbor that'll fit these. Um, <clears throat> so what if it's not hardened and tempered like some of the commercial units, it'll work for my purposes. So to do that, I was digging around through my junk pile and saw all sorts of different things I could use, different little bits and scraps, and then I came across this. It's an inner tie rod off of a, uh, well, Toyota Matrix, Pontiac Vibe, that, you know, that sort of little chassis. Now, the um, thing about this one is there's a hex already. Uh, the thread in here is one half twenty. This uh, journal here is just a hair over a half inch. Uh, this is just a hair over five eighths. The hex is a six hundred thousandths across flats, which isn't five eighths, isn't you know, it isn't sixteen millimeter, uh, isn't fifteen millimeter. It's yeah. Funnily enough, five sixteenths British Whitworth is a five twelve, so it's actually a reasonable fit. Go figure. Anyway, I'm gonna make it out of this guy. Cut it off here. Cut it off here thread this end, and turn down this end for a shank. It's really, again, a little quickie, just making making a tool out of some literally scrap. This, you know, I, I save all the junk and garbage that comes off of a car if it has, you know, any sort of usable straight stock in it. There we go. I can always face more off on the lathe. I know for something this small I could have just used the hacksaw, but sometimes I'm just feeling lazy. It's funny, Harold used to say every job starts on the bandsaw. Then he got himself that really cool new saw, but bandsaw still works for me. Yeah, that's a little better. Went to put it together and found the jaws were kind of nasty coming together. Pulled the jaws, cleaned them out. <laughs> they slide much better now. Five twelve. So we want well a few thousandths under a half inch. So 12, so if we take, you know, 8 radius, 16 thousandths, that should get us close. Then we'll work up to that shoulder. Yeah, nasty surface finish, but it doesn't really matter. There, good enough. Alright, so I've got my half inch 20 um, dice, or die set up in the die stock. I have the tapered side into the taper, well, basically the back side of the die stock, simply because this way I can use the uh, 
tailstock. Bring it forward if I can get enough clearance here. Take some of the threading motion lotion. There. So I'm going to have to turn the turn the chuck because I don't think I'm going to have enough clearance trying to spin the uh, die stock back. There, I like that. It's a decent looking thread. Now what we'll do is we'll use the uh, non-tapered side of the die to cut our threads right up against the shoulder. There. Hmm. Yeah, that even the square end of it didn't quite get up into that end there. We can fix that. Just create a little thread relief there. Yeah, there we go. That'll snug up. Right on. Oops. <coughs> the next step here is to uh, drill the center out and um, make space for a pilot drill. Um, I have a few of these kicking around yet. They're quarter inch. Um, it seems like a number of commercial ones use a quarter inch pilot. We'll do that too. We'll just grind a little flat into the shank and shorten it a bit um, to accept the set screw. Once we actually get it in place, it should work something like so. You got your length there. So yeah, we can make a, one of these guys work. All right, that's an inch and a half worth. Thankfully, I have a few of these bits I can use to test with. So they're just for sizing. Uh, a little bit further. So right now, yeah, I'll go back just a little bit further. There we go. So that should be just about the right amount of stick out for, um, you know, for proper piloting. And that means that in this round section here, in this round journal area, we can still dr drill and tap for our um, set screw. We can just shorten the drill bit off to about there. That will work just nicely. Ah. Again, this, uh, project or this tool doesn't have to be super super precision just it has to work thing is I don't want to sound too cavalier though because I also don't want my you know given ascribed name to he who builds crap all right time to flip it around all right, now this end here, again, is going to be a bit of free form. I need a, you know, whatever size journal. I, you know, I have a 3 8 inch dr uh, drill, so I might actually make that 3 8 and that way if I ever want to make it smaller, um, if I want to put a hex on at some point, if I'm feeling ambitious or it's slipping, that gives me enough meat to do that. In the meantime, we're just going to make it round. 
and put a little shoulder there. We need to go faster, Phil. All right, 576, we want 375, so we need 200,000 soft, otherwise known as uh, 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 yeah, 200,000 soft, so 100,000 sun radius. And, yeah, that'll work. That'll fit in a 3 8 drill. That'll work. So, lathe work is done. Now, in retrospect, I realize now I did make a bit of an error. I should have just cut the drill bit off before I started doing length, uh, length checking because then that would have put it back to about here-ish. Oh well. It'll probably hold. <laughs> Again, I'm only drilling plastic with this, so it, it should be okay. I goofed. So, have it uh, clamped down the drill press. Um, I got it good and snug as best I can here. Um, I'm, hope, I'm trying not to do too much drilling pressure because I don't really have this super well supported, but thankfully it's just a small hole. I just did a visual alignment on center. Um, it's, yeah. For the purposes of this, it'll, be, it'll work just fine. going to power tap on this machine, but I am going to use the drill to at least get it started square. There, that should be enough. <coughs> that will be enough. All right, well, that moment when you realize that your cordless microphone receiver's battery is just croaked and you're just talking to dead air. Lovely. Number three is the tapping drill size for a quarter 28. I'm looking in the end here and I can see the point going through. This is the first tap. The nice sharp point. And we'll use a bottoming just to make sure that we have threads all the way through. All right. Now I put my set screw here. Some there we go. Now before I go much further, I'm going to take this drill bit because this is the one we'll use for our pilot. And yeah, I still feel silly about that little brain fart. But what we'll do is we'll try to get down that hole, and mark where I have to put the flat. It's right close to the base of the flutes. All right, so have our little flat ground in there. Just 
take our set screw. There we are. There's that. Take our saw. That'll work. There we go. One hole saw arbor. I realize that on this end here, uh, the wall will be a little bit thinner where the drill bit goes through. <laughs> Most of the time I'm only drilling holes in uh, plastic or wood anyway. If I have to do anything bigger, I usually bore it using, uh, you know, using the mill or the lathe. So. For the purposes I need, at least for this job, this will be just fine. In retrospect, as I say, I should have thought about what I was doing and cut the drill bit off back about here, and then that would have left this part here intact. But again, for the purposes I need, this this will work okay. Just if you do this yourself, you know, make sure you leave or make sure you cut the drill bit off like I didn't. Well, I suppose that would be a mess if we didn't just at least drill a hole in something. So I do have this scrap of uh, well, it's. You know diamond play aluminum if it'll drill this it'll drill the uh, plastic no problem I just have a piece of OSB to back it up just because of the fact if I try pushing too much it's gonna it's gonna flex a little too much again my half inch drill is now at work otherwise I could have made the shank a half inch drill shank Let's move my phone. Well, there's a little disc in there. And cut through aluminum, okay. Eight eighty nine. Yep, I would say that's an acceptable fit. So yeah, we're in business. We can start making. We can start wiring up that box. Sweet. Well, Murphy may not have bit me this time, but he sure got up and tickled me and made me annoyed, that's for sure. As I say, I should have cut the drill bit off, but such is life. This will work for my purposes, so I figure, well, new one, or to buy one in the store is 20 bucks uh, plus tax or whatever, and I wound up spending mm, a little over an hour in my shop getting to play and used up some, you know, basically junk car parts to make a tool I need, so... I consider it still a win. Anyway, um, now that I have this whole saw and this for you know doing what I need to do, I can now take this pile of stuff and a couple other parts and make the electrical system for the shaper. Uh, biggest thing is for the shaper, I want to make it uh, safe to modern safety standards. Um, I'm not running line voltage up to that really cool switch up front, but I want to use that really cool old switch. So that's part of what I'm up to here. Anyway. Uh, Hopefully I can get onto this. We can get this video out soon. So otherwise, thanks for watching. Thank you all who subscribe. Thanks everybody who hasn't subscribed, but just passing through. It's, you know, good to have you here. Um, thanks for wanting to come hang out in my little shop. Uh, comments and uh, such are welcome as well. Uh, if you have any questions or, you know, whatever, just want to say hi, feel free to email me. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.